Sometimes it's just good to ask other Christians, what game are you watching? Meaning, are you paying attention to the actual game or are you listening to something else? For some reason, we have this infatuation, this desire to focus on the enemy, to focus on demons and not focus on the actual game. Think about this. We talk about demons and being demonized or being demon possessed, whatever terminology you want to use. We talk about that so much as though that is the main thing that's spoken of in the Bible. It's not. It's not even close to what's being spoken of in the Bible. Think about this. The apostles that people want to try to emulate nowadays, the power of these apostles, these people who others say they want to be like and walk in their power. How often did you hear Paul or Peter or James or John or Jude or whomever else speak about demons, especially about demons in their life, especially about demons inflicting harm on their lives? No, they are not. What they're speaking most often about is the power of the spirit, the presence of the spirit in their walk. Now, if there are demons, obviously we believe there are. We believe there's demonic influence, there's demonic powers out there. But if they are, which there are, then there also are angelic powers. And if there's angelic powers, there's also a God with his Holy Spirit behind them. Think about what we don't think about as it relates to angels. According to Daniel 7.10, there are myriads of angels, myriads upon myriads of them standing before them. And also according to Psalm 103.20, what does he say? He says that they are mighty in strength who do what? They perform his word. Well, last I checked, God is working in us through his spirit. The Bible says that he has caused us to be born again and that those who have his spirit, he is going to work in us, one, everything for our good, for those who love him. And he says he's going to cause us to walk. He's going to protect us. He's going to keep us. How? How does he do so? Well, if there's an enemy that comes after you, then there must be, if God is correct, if the word is correct, there's also the use of these mighty ones, who are also working on our behalf. How do I know? Because the Bible says this in Hebrews 1:14. Notice what he says. Are they not all ministering spirits, speaking of angels, sent out to render service for whom? Look what it says. For the sake of those who will inherit salvation. In other words, these angels work on our behalf. For those who are saved, they are ministering spirits on behalf of God for us. They serve him on behalf of us, I should say, for those who are saved, who will inherit it. In other words, we literally have these myriads upon myriads, these mighty creatures working on behalf of us, protecting us, working for one, our benefit, but also for the glory of God. And notice something he says about, about children also. It makes you wonder, does this also apply to us? Or do children lose their angels once they, once they get older? Because that's what he says in Matthew 18, 10. He says, see that you do not despise one of these little ones. But here's a, here's a kicker. For I say to you that their angels in heavenly in heaven, continually see the face of my father who is in heaven. In other words, they have their angels. And notice this is plural, their angels. Now, does it say that each person has one angel or they have multiple angels? We don't know, but we have angels. I don't know if there are necessarily demons assigned to any one person, but certainly there's at least one angel assigned to us. They work on our behalf. And what does the Bible say? That they are actually watching us. Notice what he says in 1 Corinthians 4, 9. He says, for I thank God has exhibited us apostles, last of all, as men condemned to death, because we have become a spectacle to the world, both to angels and men. In other words, angels are watching. And they're not just watching just for the sake of watching. They don't have a bag of popcorn sitting on their couch watching us. No, they are actively involved because, again, they are ministering spirits for who? For us that are saved. And so think about this. Here we are as believers. God has these powerful creatures working on our behalf to do what? What do you think those angels are doing? If there's some sort of demonic attack or whatever demonic attack the enemy wants to bring, who do you think there is our line of defense? These angels. And so no, we don't typically see demons and we don't typically see angels. If we were to be able to have spiritual eyes to see demons, which for some reason, some folks want to see demons. I don't know why, but if you were able to see demons uh, as constantly as people think they do, if they were truly spiritual, you know what they would notice even more of? This is how you know that this is a lie from the enemy to tell people how much uh, people can be demonized if they're Christians, because if they were to see demons, why don't they also see angels? The Bible is clear, they're there, 
It's not that demons occupy this, this spiritual space by themselves. There are angels there as well. And so don't let someone tell you that there's more demonic activity than there's more angelic activity. Don't let people think that the enemy is working harder than our heavenly father is working for us. Don't let them think that. And when it comes down to a game between demons versus angels, who's going to win? Who's got the more might? My money's on the angels.